In this video, which is a little bit ahead of its time, we'll derive a general formula for the dot product in the component space with respect to an arbitrary basis that is not necessarily Cartesian. Like this basis, for example, it has one unit vector, one vector of length two, and the angle between them is 60 degrees. And for future reference, cosine of 60 degrees is one half. So we're once again taking a short detour away from Cartesian bases, just to keep ourselves honest. Because doing so every once in a while puts the rest of the discussion, which is done with respect to Cartesian bases, into a little bit of a perspective. So the approach that we're going to use is an approach that we used before for proving the formula in the Cartesian case. And we've actually traveled this entire path before, except in the case of the Cartesian bases, we could go further than we can now. Here's what I'm talking about. Suppose we're dotting V and W, and the coefficients of V are once again named alpha 1 and alpha 2, except it's with respect to a new basis. And the coefficients of W are once again beta 1 and beta 2 with respect to the new basis. Same names, different values. And we can once again use the distributive law. We're right now not taking advantage of any of the special properties of this basis. Not that it has too many special properties. And when we foil this expression out by a repeated application of the distributive law, we'll end up with these four terms, just like we did before. Except before, we were using with a Cartesian basis. So a few very nice things happened. For example, these cross terms dropped out because our original vectors were orthogonal, so these dot products were zero. So these two terms dropped out. And these two terms greatly simplified because both of the uh, figuring dot products here were 1, because the length of each vector was 1. So right now we're simply not able to make those same statements, but we can make analogous statements. In fact, in the case of this relatively simple basis, we can still evaluate all of these in dot products without any problem. So let's actually do that. Uh, let me pick a yellow chalk. So b1 dotted with b1 is the length of b1 squared, and that of course is 1. And the Let's go for b2 dotted with b2. That's the length of b2 squared. So that's 4. So we're doing great. And now b1 dotted with b2 is the length of b1 times the length of b2, which is 2, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. That's 1 half. So this number is 1, and this number is 1. So for this specific basis, we now have its corresponding formula for the dot product. It's not as simple as alpha 1 beta 1 plus alpha 2 beta 2, but it's not much more complicated. Let's say it out loud. It's alpha 1 beta 1 plus alpha 1 beta 2 plus alpha 2 beta 1 plus 4 alpha 2 beta 2, a few extra terms, but nothing particularly complicated. Now, if we don't know anything about the basis, we just have to stop right here, just realizing that these are some numbers. And whatever numbers they are, that's what they are. Nothing else we can say about it. And the answer would be whatever this number is times alpha 1 beta 1 plus whatever this number is times alpha 1 beta 2 plus whatever this number is times alpha 2 beta 1 plus whatever this number is times alpha 2 beta 2. That's all we can say. But that's a final answer. It's a pretty good answer. It's very much an expression in the component space in terms of the components. So whatever our goal was, that was our goal, and we met our goal. The only nice thing that we can do now, and it's a very nice thing indeed, is organize this long expression into a very simple matrix expression. Can you see how to do it? I think once I write it down, you will see that if you were to multiply it out, it would actually evaluate to this. So here it is. You, when we talk about inner products, you will see this sort of thing over and over again. Alpha 1, alpha 2 times this matrix right here that I'll fill in in just a moment times column beta 1, beta 2. So what goes into this matrix is this coefficients. We just have to put them in all the right places. So in the case of this basis, it would be 1, 1, 1, 4. I'm writing it small because I'm about to write the very general expression. 
right? And this, once you multiply it out, will evaluate to this expression. So this is great. And once again, if the basis is not special in any way, what we would have instead of this one is the number B1 dotted with B1. And this number would be B1 dotted with B2. And this number right here, you can call it B1 dotted with B2, but just to keep the pattern going, we'll write it as B2 dotted with B1. Thanks to commutativity, makes no difference whatsoever. And finally, this term is B2 dotted with B2. And there you go. Perfect. How would we describe this matrix? Let's give it a name. We'll call it M. You'll see in a moment why we call it M. And so in matrix terms, the expression analogous to alpha transpose B becomes alpha transpose M. Excuse me. I said alpha transpose B. Alpha transpose beta becomes alpha transpose M beta. So just a little bit more complicated than alpha transpose beta with this matrix in the middle. How would we describe this matrix? I would describe this matrix as the matrix of pairwise dot products of the basis elements. So whatever the basis is, two in three dimensions, three vectors, then when we generalize this in an algebraic way to higher dimensions, n vectors. In how many ways can you form pairs of those vectors? Well, four here, nine here, n squared in the n dimensional case. So that's how many pairwise dot products we can find. And we can organize them very nicely in a table. And we would have a matrix like this, very systematic, where the entry in the ith row in the jth column is bi dotted with bj. That's how nice it is. Of course, it's symmetric, which would enable us to write this as beta transpose m alpha. Same thing. Okay. And now the only thing that I can mention is the names for this matrix, and there are plenty. One of them is the dot product matrix. Later on, it will be the inner product matrix or the matrix representing the dot product with respect to the basis. It is also known, where should I put it? How about right here? As the Gram matrix, Gram, a name which will reappear uh, when we talk about inner product. And another term that I prefer is metric. You can either call it the metric matrix or you can simply call it the metric. And it is called the metric because the dot product is responsible for lengths, right? The dot product is all about lengths and angles. So it's about measuring things. It's about metrics. So it's the matrix that allows us to make all the measurements. And so the term metric makes perfect sense and it's actually my favorite. So there you go. As you can see, going from the Cartesian basis to the general basis, at least when it comes to the dot product, is not difficult at all. And we have derived the general expression for the dot product in the component space with respect to an arbitrary basis.